When it comes to climbing, you might well have seen the slab, a crazy steep 37 degree rock face in the middle of a city centre. Alternatively, you might have seen this, the rock, more of a big mountain free climb up in the mountains. Or you might have seen the climb we did at the Rock Desert Festival, probably one of the most difficult climbs I've ever done on an e-bike. So what are the techniques involved in doing climbs such as these? First off, what are we talking about when we use the terms extreme or technical? Well, the things that come to my mind are things such as complex, tortuous, involved, or just plain difficult. Now, the slab, that was difficult, that was extreme, but at the same time, it was actually pretty smooth. But then again, there was the rock, that was steep, but it was fiercely aggressive with constantly changing banks. So, you can actually have very different types of extreme climbing because we actually did a climb back in the summer closer to home which had loads of steps, steps such as these. So when you're climbing up a hill with, with this constantly in front of you, it really is quite demanding physically. Now when we're tackling these difficult climbs on our e-bikes, you need to remember that we're probably riding terrain which we've never seen before, so it's really important that you get the strength and fitness to sustain that climb. Let's not forget here that e-bikes have probably taken us into environments probably much harder than that we've done on classic mountain bikes. So the message here is that fitness and strength is as important as it's ever been. Now some of the big climbs we've done on EMBN have taken hours to get up, such as those in the Alps or the Dolomites. Yeah, closer to home, they can be short punchy climbs which nevertheless are still pretty physical. <laughs> oh, the point is even short and steep can really get the heart going so you can imagine that times 50. Climbing on an e-bike is a real physical activity. Now on a classic mountain bike, you might well be putting everything you've got through the cranks. Yet on an e-mountain bike, you need to make sure you keep spinning up that hill, let the motor get you back, and just concentrate on keeping that traction through your back wheel. On a classic mountain bike, there is no doubt you'll probably be stood up 95% of the time on a really steep climb. However, on e-bike, the opposite is probably true. That depends on the nature of the terrain. Now, as you can see here, there's two different examples. You have uh, some very rooty ground, which is nevertheless on quite a smooth gradient, which that will definitely require a sat down approach. However, over here, things get a little bit more involved, a little bit more complex where there's some big steps. So there's definitely gonna be certain times where you probably will have to get out of the saddle simply to change your weight distribution on the bike. At the same time, don't forget that even when you're sat down, you're constantly moving your weight forwards and backwards to keep the front wheel down and the rear wheel in traction. On any difficult climb, I can guarantee you that I'll either be riding in the easiest gear or at least the second easiest gear just to be able to take my time and pick my way up the climb. Now, most modern e-bikes are designed so that the gearing and the motor run in harmony. What I like about riding in the easy gear is that you come to a section where there's a sudden change of slope where you need to accelerate and then you can get that easy gear to help you up that bank. Boom. Now gearing on e-bikes obviously varies from brand to brand. So here I've got the specialized lever, which I've been riding today. And the biggest cog in the back is a 42, whereas up front, it's a 32. Now, if you compare that to a lot of modern classic mountain bikes where they run in SRAM Eagle and they've got up to maybe a 50 tooth uh, chainring on the back and a really small 30 tooth chainring on the front. If you want to see more about uh, gearing on e-bikes and how it affects climbing, uh, I've done a video which you'll find, uh, I'll, I'll leave a link at the end of the video.
Now, very frequently I get asked what motor, how much power do you need on an e-bike? Now, every motor is different. They all have their different traits, but ultimately it's about technique, not about the motor. And as I mentioned earlier, don't go snatching on those pedals as you would on a classic mountain bike. So even on technical terrain, you can just put it into extra power and just let the motor do the work. And this time, Specialized Levo, different wheel size, different tires, different tire pressures, different gearing. There's still the same rule applies. It's all about the technique and the weighting of the tires when you get up those climbs. Okay, so which power mode? Well, here we are in Eco. Oh, yeah, that's not getting up there. However, having said that, you can sometimes use a different technique, just using the speed to override the motor. So again, I'm in eco mode, higher gear, and just use traditional approach. Obviously that's a short, sharp bank, so you're not gonna be able to sustain that up a 1K hill. If you have got a short, sharp bank, I suggest you stick it into turbo, boost, extra power, easiest gear, but still remember, technique is important. <laughs> Look, it will go up there. Let's just leave it at that. I think the message here is leave it in high power mode. Right, what tyres do you use on technical climbs? Well, again, it depends on the terrain. If you've got really gnarly rocks and roots, then I suggest maybe a big 2.8 a big volume tire, whereas if it's loose going and muddy, then definitely a 2.5 with a more aggressive tread pattern to dig into that earth. But whatever, it needs an aggressive tread pattern, whatever kind of climb you're doing. Now the big question, do you have your seat down or do you have your seat up when you're climbing? Well, the news here is you need to go against every rule in the book have your seat down, have your legs almost around your ears, because what that does, it enables you to move your position forwards or backwards to control the front wheel and the rear wheel, and thereby keep that traction on your rear tire, put more weight in it when you're going up the hill. Now, I really want to emphasize the importance of body position and moving your body position when you're climbing to maintain traction. As you can see, this is a pretty mellow climb, my seat's up, however, you can see that I'm actually quite limited in how forwards and rearwards I can go on the bike. So I'm going to try and do it again with my seat down. Now this time I've got the saddle down. You can see I can get really far back or really far forwards and I can move myself on that saddle to maintain the best body position and traction on the rear whilst keeping that front down. So let's go on to a really steep bank and see how that works in practice. So I'd say this was a pretty steep bank. So what I'm going to do is keep my traction on the back and then shift my body weight forwards to get up the climb. Uh, so thereby keeping that front wheel down yet keeping a little bit of traction on that rear wheel. It's all about compromise between front and rear. So we've covered many things then, body position, tires, gearing, power mode, seat up, seat down, you name it, there's so much involved in technical climbing. But remember too that line choice is important when climbing on an e-bike. So spot your lines, and go for those moments of big effort, like this one here. And then before you hit your next step, have a breather, then go again. Because sometimes you could be climbing for up to two hours on an e-bike in the mountains. So there you go, climbing on an e-bike. Definitely every bit as physical as on a classic mountain bike. So fitness is probably one of the most important things when it comes to technique. Hope you liked the video, let us know your comments. I'll give my breath back in a minute. Um, some more videos, check out The Rock, which was in North Wales, which was a, a big whole mountain challenge. And then or obviously there's our city centre slab feature, which we did at 37 degrees. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to EMVN so we can keep doing these daft things in the woods. Cheers.